We are we live we live I see you on TGM Television. Good evening. All right, we are live tonight. It is great to see you guys. I am Minister Marcus, and uh, welcome to the Maximize Your Life Bible Study. Uh, what I do on Wednesday nights is I come on and I try to uh, give two or three things that can help us uh, as we try to live the Christian life. Even for those of you who just trying to do better in life, you know this is the perfect Bible study for you. And so uh, I don't like to stay on real long. I know it's the middle of the week. Uh, but I do uh, believe that God always has some some things to say to encourage us or to, you know, uh, make us better along our journey. So with that, guys, uh, it's great to see you guys on uh, Facebook, on Instagram and uh, on YouTube tonight. I'm not going to be too long. Uh, we are in Judges. I believe this is the last week that we will be in Judges. I missed you guys last week due to the cold. My Internet was out. So it was no way that I was going to be able to uh, uh, come to you. But, you know, uh, tonight, here I am. So uh, we're going to Judges. Um, this month we are in Judges. The last night we're going to be in Judges. Next month we go to Ruth. I hope you guys will be here next Wednesday night for that. There's going to be some great lessons coming out of Ruth, I can already tell you. Uh, but tonight we are in Judges. We're going to Judges Chapter 3. And I got only two things for you tonight. should be real quick. Just two things to think about. And then uh, I'm going offline. All right, and so we're going to Judges chapter 3, verse 7 through 11. All right, Judges chapter 3, verse 7 through 11. And I'm going to read it out of the New American Standard Bible. Judges chapter 3, verse 7 through 11. And uh, oh, I see y'all on, on Instagram. How y'all doing? All right, 3, 7 through 11. I see you on Facebook. <laughs> All right, I'm going to read it. Uh, the sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Ashtoreth. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel uh, so that he sold them into the hands of Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia. And the sons of Israel served Cushan eight years. When the sons of Israel cried to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the sons of Israel to deliver them, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. The spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel. When he went out to war, the Lord gave Cushan, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand so that he prevailed over him. All right. And so with that, guys, I got two things for you tonight. Uh, it's the second lesson in Judges. Um, and so I, I remember last time uh, we was in, uh, that I talked about Judges, I talked about how chapter two, it kind of prefaced, it told you everything about what the book was going to be about. And, uh, uh, and so it, it talks about like the cycles that the nation of Israel were in. So they would start off doing good. And then once they leader would die, they would kind of fall back into, you know what I'm saying? Those habits, God will punish them. They crowd to them. And it kind of went in like a circle, uh, you know, a cycle of events. And so uh, that's what we were talking about uh, the last time in chapter two. And it kind of gave you an outline of the way that the book was going to go. Well, by chapter three, you can see the stuff starting to happen. So it, it, it gave you like a a preview of the book in chapter two, but by chapter three, you start to see it happening. And so this chapter opens by letting us know that God had allowed other nations to stay in the land with them. Right. And so according to the story, uh, he allowed them to stay in the land, not to punish them, but to prove them, not to punish them, but to prove them. Like I said, I got only two, only two things tonight, not to punish them, but to prove them, it was God's way of seeing if they could live godly in an ungodly environment. And I think that's very significant, especially for where we are uh, in 2021, you know, because it's it's real popular now. Everybody has spiritual quotes and, 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 and things like that. But but for me, it's a, it's about the lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's about the lifestyle. It's it's about uh, um, um, being able to stick to your Christian morals and Christian values no matter where you are. That goes beyond toting the Bible. That goes beyond quoting the scripture every time somebody say good morning. That ain't got nothing to do with you saying blessed and highly favored. But I believe it has everything to do with character. I believe it has everything to do with the way you handle your problems, the way you handle your anger. And so, and so what God does to the nation of Israel, 
is he left other nations around them. And this is what it says at the beginning of the chapter to prove them. It was God's way of seeing if they could live godly in an ungodly environment. And sometimes God allows situations just to see if you will choose right, even when wrong is presented to you. And I think that that's so significant because for so many of us, we do right when people are watching, right? We do right when, you know, the lights and the camera is on. We do right, right? When when everybody is around at church, we know what to say. We know how to, how to act. We know everything that we're supposed to do. But the question is, the question is, uh, uh, is that when nobody is looking, can you choose the right thing? Can you choose the right thing even when you present it with the wrong thing and nobody would know, right? And so my number one, my number one is one word, integrity. Integ- I don't know what that one word integrity means to you, but to me, I had to learn to be a man of integrity. And so my number one, integrity. What is your level of integrity? I think that's a good question. What is your level of integrity, right? Because we all know we can come to church, we can dress it up, right? We can look fly in our suits and our dresses, right? But what is your level of integrity? Can I trust you when I can't see you? Can I trust you when I'm not around you? What is your level of integrity? And I think that it's significant because what we don't realize is that God is concerned with our level of integrity. What if I told you that your level of blessings was determined by your level of integrity? It's a way of saying, can God trust you to choose right even when you present it with what is wrong? And I want you to get this. I want you to understand trials come to test your faith. But temptation comes to test your integrity. I I want you to get that. Trials come to test your faith. But temptation comes to test your integrity. And if I was to ask you, how strong is your integrity when temptation comes? I think that would change a lot of us who say, right, that we really trust God or that we really love God or that we really Christians. But when the temptation comes, does your integrity, can your integrity stand the test of temptation. Get this, this, and this is what we read in chapter three, that their environment made them forget their commitment to God. Look, when they first left Egypt, they go to Mount Sinai and God says to them, I want to be your God. Will you be my people? They say, yes, God, we love you. We want you to be our God. But they get to the promised land and they got all these other things going around them, right? And then all of a sudden their environment made them forget Mount Sinai. And look, I ain't going to talk about y'all. I'm going to talk about me. How many times, ask yourself this question, how many times has your environment made you forget your commitments? I, I want to ask you that question. How many times have your environment made you forget your commitments? And I think that's significant in 2021 because nobody, it seems nobody in 2021 has any type of understanding of what commitment means. It's easy to make a, uh, make a commitment in the moment. When they was at Mount Sinai, they was ready to commit to God. We will be your people. We love you, God. But once they got out, right, right, once they got out and around the people, their commitment changed because their environment changed. And I wonder how many of you can really just be real with yourself and say, you know what? There were times that I wanted to do what was right and I said I was going to do what was right. Right. But then when the time came, come on, let's just be real. You know, I, I, <laughs> I slipped a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And I see it all the time. I see it all the time. While you at church, while you're around church people, it's easy to commit yourself to something because all of the church people are there. But when you leave the church, when your environment change, does your commitment change with your environment? Environment. And I think that's significant. They forgot about God. They forgot about their commitment to God. They forgot. And you know what? I, I, I counsel a lot of couples. I counsel a lot of marriages. And, 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 and it's a reality because so many times the place, the environment that the commitment is made, right? It changes when the environment changes. And my question is my number one. What is your level of integrity? It's one thing to make a commitment while the environment is conducive to it. But what happens when you get around people who do things that you don't do, 
right? Who 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 enjoy things that you don't, you know, that you said you wasn't going to enjoy no more or that you was going to really put to the side. Then the question becomes, will your environment make you forget your commitment? And I think that's significant. When you get in an environment where it's okay to do the things that you said you wasn't going to do, when, when you get in an environment where you say it's okay, but will you forget your commitment to be a Christian? And this is where he said, God has a problem with them because they did not keep their word. And it's simple as that. They didn't keep their word. And I think that, it, man, I think that's so significant because nowadays we go with the flow, right? But And, and this has nothing to do, like I said, that this ain't about quoting scriptures or this ain't about toting the Bible or saying blessed and highly favored, but it's all about your integrity. God here is saying he wants people who are not going to forget their commitment just because the environment changed, right? He wants people of integrity. And I don't know about you. I know God wants people of integrity, but for my life, I want people of integrity. I need people who are not going to forget. I need people. Don't forget that you're my friend when you get around people that ain't my friend. Don't forget that you committed to me when you get around. Come on, I want you to hear me. when I, I need people who are not going to forget. And this is what God is saying. God is saying, I need people of integrity, People who can stand on their commitments. And now I think that's a good question. Will your commitment change if the condition change? I think that's a significant question. Will your commitment change if the condition change? Will, 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 will you forget what you said that you was going to do when you, and I want you to hear that. Are you making decisions based on what you committed to or on what's convenient to you? And I think a lot of us make decisions on what's convenient. And here's what I want to say before I leave this, because you don't realize that you forfeit blessings when you lie, when nobody is looking, when you cheat and nobody is looking, when you steal or get over when nobody's looking, you forfeit your blessings. I had to learn this the hard way that God really deserves blessings for people who do right in the face of wrong. I had to learn that because whenever nobody, you know, I was, I used to be a player. Come on. I'm just, I'm talking about me. I used to be a player. And as soon as the, you know, as soon as everybody left, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna do what I got to do. But I want you to hear me when I say this, when you think nobody is looking, God is looking. And the God who sees in secret, he does reward you. Let me marketize that, right? The God who sees in secret will expose you openly. I didn't had it done to me so many times where the God who sees in secret, he won't just reward you openly, but he'll expose you openly. And I want you to get this, that some consequences come from things that God saw that nobody else saw. Some consequences come from things that God saw that nobody else saw. God has a way of exposing you or paying you back for the people that you have done wrong. But here's what I love about it. I love that some blessings come because God saw what nobody else saw. God saw you working. And this is my encouragement for you tonight before we go to number two. We're talking about integrity for number one. God saw you doing right in the face of wrong. God saw you working diligently. God saw when you could have, but you didn't because of your integrity. And here's what I like about that is that God reserves blessings for people who do right, even in the face of wrong. He, he reserves blessings for people who do right, even when they could have done wrong. And I think that's a word for us tonight because so many times we choose wrong because it's convenient or we choose what's convenient, but we're not considering the commitment that we made. But I love how God has a way of blessing you in public for overcoming private struggles. And I, I that, that part, that excites me because there are so many, there are so many things that I have done. There are so many obstacles. I know I'm not the only one. Somebody that's watching, you probably... Uh, uh, started to get discouraged or you probably start to, it's no, it's, you know, it's no winning and doing the right thing. It's no good and do I don't know if God really see me, but I want to encourage you before we go to number two, integrity matters and God can see you and God has a way of paying you back for all of the good that you've done that nobody else saw, for all of the right things that you did that nobody else knew about. God has a way of paying you back. All right. And so number one, what is your level of integrity? That's number one. All right. And so here's number two. And look, I'm almost done. I only got two things for you tonight. When they cried out to God, God delivered them. I want you to hear that. When they cried out to God, God delivered them. I want to point this out, that they had been suffering for eight years before they cried out to God. They had been suffering for eight years before they cried out to God. When, he, when they cried out, he delivered them. 
but they suffered for eight years. And I want you to get this, that God, I look, I call God, he's the, he's the, the OG instead of OG, because you know what? As loving as he is, as kind and generous as he is, he let them suffer until they were ready to change. I'm going to say that again. He let them suffer until they were ready to change. And I know you go to church and they talk about the God who is going to bless you, who is going to deliver you. But I want to tonight talk about the God that will let you suffer until you're ready to change. Because sometimes we so stubborn. Sometimes we so selfish. Sometimes we so stuck in our ways that God has to let you suffer until you're ready to change. And so this is my number two. My number two, my number two is make the change. Come on, say, I got to make the change. How long will you take dealing with a situation before you decide to change? How long? Look, look, I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about me because I was so hard headed, right? I was so stubborn and stuck in my ways. How long will it take before you change your habits, before you change your behaviors? How long will you be stubborn before you decide to change? It was eight years that they suffered before they cried out to God. How long will you allow your life to go in circles before you decide to change? I talk to so many married people, so many people in couples, and I ask them, you keep doing the same thing, but you're expecting your marriage to be different. You keep talking the same way, but you're expecting, come on, and, and how how long will you allow your marriage to be the same? How long will you allow your money to be the same? You've been broke for years. How long are you going to allow yourself to suffer before you decide to make the change? Eight years until they got tired. Eight years until they got This is my number two. Decide to make the change. Get tired enough to make the change. Eight years. Eight years. And God let him. He'll play the weight game. He'll play the weight game. He'll play the weight game. This is what I did with my son when he was young. He had did something that he wasn't supposed to do. And I said, all right, son, do you want to whoop it or you want to go hit these weights? He said, I'm going to hit the weights because, you know, kids, they don't like whoopings. I'm like, all right, all right, you can you can do the weights. How much weight I got to lift? I told him the 2.5, you know, the little 2.5 dumbbells. I let him hold the 2.5, told him, put your arms out, you're going to hold it. He said, dad, this is light. I said, I, I, I was thinking to myself, it's light now. But give it some time, right? And, and this is what God do. Sometimes he'll play the weight game. I, I went out the room and I let him stay in there for about two minutes. I come back. He was like, Dad, it's starting to get a little heavy. I, I know. Just keep on. You said you wanted to hold the weight. So we're going to play the weight. I'm going to wait it out with the weights. So I, I let him wait. So I went out. I came back in there about three minutes later. And you know what? Dude, was he was losing it. He holding them. It's 2.5. Get this. I had him holding the 2.5 weights. I had him holding them. Over time, the weight. Started weighing on it. I came back in there. He said, Dad, this hurt. Dad, this hurt. And I want you to hear me that sometimes God got to play the weight game and allow you to hold on to some things, right, that he didn't already told you you probably don't need to hold on. And God said, I'm not going to force you to let it go, but I'm going to just give it some time. And the more time I give it, the things that you holding on going to start to get heavy. And this is what he did. He allowed them to suffer for eight years until, come on, they actually start to get a little bit too heavy. And I want you to hear me when I say this, that God will sometimes allow you to hold on to habits, to hold on to people that start getting too heavy and it starts to hurt. I, my son, I went back in the room and he said, dad, this hurt. I'm like, you ready to put it down? Go on, take these pops. You, and I want you to hear me. Sometimes God will allow you to hold that stuff that you shouldn't be holding because eventually it's going to start getting too heavy. Time and look, that's it has a way of wearing away at the things that are on the inside of you, that unforgiveness that you're holding on to, the anger, the stubbornness that you're holding on to, the pride. God will play the weight game and have you waited out until it gets too heavy. Eight years went by before they cried out to God. Sometimes it takes a while, right? Sometimes it takes a while. And I want to encourage you guys tonight, for those of you who are looking at a situation or it seems like too big, God will get... He will turn it around, but just give it some time. Give it some time. I want you to hear me. My number two is be willing, be ready to make that change. Because if you don't, you're going to be like my son holding those weights. And guess what? God will let you hold it until it starts to hurt to the point where you got to cry out to him. And so, man, I hope something that I said tonight is an encouragement to you. I'm at 18 minutes going on 19. That's all I got for you. I got two simple things, two simple things. What? Is your level of integrity. That was our number one. And number two, be willing, be ready to make that change. Because if you don't, 
it's, it's it's hard holding the weights. I don't care how light the weight is. Over time, that weight start to get heavy. So be willing, be ready to make that change. So guys, with that, I'm I'm going offline. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for tuning in. I come on every Wednesday night at eight thirty. I try to bring the Bible study to you for those of you who can't make it to church and just don't want to go. I try to bring Bible study to you. And so I hope something that I said uh, was a, a, a touched you or helped you tonight. Please go visit our website. It's www.thegodmovement.com. We have a lot of major things coming up this year. So please go visit our website. See how you can benefit from it or see how you can be a part or contribute to some of the things that we're doing. Um, and so with that, guys, uh, thank y'all for watching once again. And I'm going offline. Y'all have a good evening. Good night, uh, Instagram. Good night, Facebook. And good night, TGM Television.